we do need a little drum roll here. Final session of this year's the first ever Swin and VX. And um, uh, what could be more appropriate than uh, having a uh, CEO from Launch Action Swindler herself is going to talk about VAS and what we do. So the floor is yours, Pam Webb. Thank you very much. Morning, everybody. And um, I just wanted to say a big thank you to Joel and uh, Rachel behind the scenes as well for all their hard work in pulling this week's uh, sort of virtual expo uh, together. It was something we wanted to do to raise the profile of all the fantastic services that are out there in the voluntary sector um, and uh, hopefully the week this week has gone some way uh, to, to doing that so I'm now going to attempt to share my slides so bear with me no, hopefully no, they will be up soon so can you see those John got it thank Perfect. you Okay, so I'm actually going to talk about Voluntary Action Swindon and what we do as a local charity and a member of the Swindon voluntary sector. Uh, actually, we nearly forgot to do this as part of the uh, the VX session, so so that was uh, I'm quite pleased we thought about that at the last bit. Um, so I'm going to talk about what VAS is and what we do, um, and we are the CVS for Swindon, which stands for the Council for Voluntary Services. Um, there are around 200 of these across the UK. Our nearest neighbour uh, in Wiltshire is Wessex Community Action, based in Salisbury, um, and they come under various guises and headings. But quite typically, um, a CVS will provide uh, help with funding and governance advice to the sector, to support collaboration uh, between the sector and between the sector and other uh, bodies, often the statutory and health bodies, in help to inform the sector with news and information, um, training courses, and uh, be the voice for the sector at sort of meetings and key forums where it's not practical to, to invite the whole of the voluntary sector and sort of be that conduit in between. Um, in addition to that, in respect of VAS in Swindon, um, we also are the voice of Swindon Equality, and I'll come on to that. We are also landlord uh, to Sanford House, which we run on behalf of Swindon Borough Council, and then we have our own building based in John Street. And we also deliver the shop ability service in the centre of Swindon. And we also, in uh, normal times, when our John Street office is open to the public, offer a printing and copying service aimed at the voluntary sector, but actually available to, to the public and anyone that would wish to use it. And we're also a DBS umbrella body, helping smaller organisations um, submit DBS checks, um, fantastically run by, by Shaz in our team, um, alongside her finance uh, management role. So I'm going to go on just to cover those in, in slightly more detail, starting with funding and governance advice. Uh, and you'll see Carol's email address there, Carol Willis, who uh, delivers this for VAS. So in this role, we will do our best to promote funding opportunities to either the sector as a whole through our various um, communication routes, which I'll come on to, or we will, Carol will specifically, you know, note if a particular funding stream might match that charity or this charity and we'll proactively reach out to them. We also subscribe to Grant Finder, which is a, a system which enables us to search for funding opportunities. So if charities are looking for particular funding for particular projects or roles, um, then uh, Carol can help you with that. Part of our role is building uh, relations with, uh, with funders, helping to set up new charities. Um, we will also help, obviously, if charities are emerging or closing. Fortunately, we uh, haven't seen too much of the latter, which is good. Um, we'll help with guidance and legal constitutions. Um, people sometimes are changing in, in the way that they're structured or perhaps haven't needed to, to be registered and legally constituted and, and are at point now where they need to be. Help and guidance with policies and sort of compliance with things. Um, we offer training on the Charity Governance Code and we're looking to develop leadership skills training for trustees. Um, Carol's done a bit of work recently with surveys out to the sector just to try and understand the impact of COVID and there'll be a report coming out shortly on that. And then in bold is the launch of our new VAS uh, Swindon Trustee Network on the 19th of May. Um, so that's going to be via Zoom between 10 and 11.30. And we have Steve Madden, the Director, the Director of Public Health for Swindon Borough Council speaking at that. So for any of you uh, voluntary organisations on the call with trust trustees, well, all of you will hopefully have those, um, if you can help us promote that, because we're really keen to make that a broad and diverse uh, trustee network for Swindon. Moving on to support our role in uh, collaboration, which um, uh, Joel leads on, and obviously this, this week's Voluntary Sector VX is a, is a key example of that. 
Um, we normally deliver an annual physical community fair, and you'll see the photo on the slide is back in the Link Centre in October 19, where we had around 40 charities with, with stands there um, providing a, a physical expo. Um, clearly, that wasn't possible last year because of COVID. Uh, and this virtual week this week um, is kind of filling that gap, but with a slight twist that we very much targeted VX this week at. Um, service users and statutory uh, health, Swinburne Council, etc. Um, organisations just to try and raise the profile of, of what's out there, as well as obviously raise it between um, the various voluntary sector organisations. So um, we are developing the Swindon directory for VCS, uh, which Joel's mentioned off the back of uh, VX. Um, I think that's had quite a lot of mention, but we do have an ambition to grow that beyond the organisations that have taken part this week. Um, Joel runs monthly VAS live sessions, which brings a group of the voluntary sector and community sector together with a guest speaker on a particular topic, followed by opportunities for, for Q&A. Um, also leading a, a coalition of 12 uh, charities focusing on uh, mental health uh, that previously came under the banner of Time to Change and is currently going through a sort of change of focus with the national Time to Change campaign coming to an end. And we did quite a lot to just connect one charities with each other. So if Carol's helping a new charity set up, she'll make sure that she introduces them to other charities who are working in a similar field. Um, and Joel is always looking at opportunities to encourage collaboration between charities. Um, I personally have been sharing a, a, what, what we currently are calling a, a voluntary sector COVID recovery group. Um, so if you haven't been part of that and you'd like to be, then please get in touch with me. I'm hoping there's about between 40 and 50 charities in that group. Uh, and it's kind of been a share down of stuff from, from the council and, and other areas and a share up from the voluntary sector and kind of a shared learning space. Um, I'm hoping it will morph into sort of a, a voluntary sector alliance for Swindon. So we've got that route to sort of um, share information out uh, and bring information up. And then we're also members of something called the Voluntary Sector um, Emergencies Partnership, uh, which is a regional and national collaboration with some of the big nationals like the Red Cross and all the infrastructure organisations across the patch, um, working together to try and help deliver a more joined up approach in, uh, in, at times of emergency. So moving on to talk about our news and information. Um, firstly, we produce a weekly newsletter, which you can easily sign up to via the homepage of our website. It goes out every Friday at 11 o'clock, so it's uh, gone out as we've been speaking. Um, and basically through that newsletter, we profile all the things we think would be useful for the voluntary sector to hear. Sometimes that's government information, sometimes it's local information, um, sometimes it's funding opportunities. Um, the only charge we make is if people want to use it to actually advertise paid roles. So if you have a live vacancy for someone you're trying to recruit, £50, we will put that in our weekly newsletter for as long as the post is open across all our social media feeds and on our website too. Um, there's our website, which is a source of information. We do have a specific uh, COVID page on there where we uh, update the guidelines and we also have examples of sort of risk reports that charities have pulled together so that um, people don't have to reinvent the wheel. There's a really large aeroplane just flying over, so I think you can still hear me. Um, the VX directory, uh, I say we've mentioned, so that will become, I'm hoping, a really good source of information. Um, on the voluntary sector in Swindon. And of course, you can follow us on social media. So we're on Twitter, Facebook and uh, LinkedIn. Um, we also provide training in Swindon. And um, typically, uh, the first lines are our first aid, health and safety, fire safety, food hygiene, manual handling, those courses which we run aimed at the voluntary sector in a cost effective way um, are face to face courses. So we haven't been running those during COVID, but we're looking forward to getting back to those in a, in a COVID safe way very soon. Um, we offer a session on the charity governance code aimed at trustees. Um, Carol is also developing uh, potential leadership skills training for trustees, and that will be um, a source of conversation at that first trustee network launch. And that's based on survey results we've had in from trustees in the past in terms of what they want. Um, and then Joel delivers um, equality, diversity and inclusion uh, training, uh, which is uh, which is very good and well recommended. And then moving on to Joel's uh, other role as well is this the voice of equality in Swindon. So we run the Swindon Equality Coalition, uh, which is the group of people that represent a range of communities and, and um, cohorts across the town, um, sort of aiming at protecting the, the nine protected, uh, sorry, representing the nine protected characteristics and beyond. Um, and issues sort of raised 
through the Swindon Equality Coalition and identified um, can be fed through through our role uh, and place on the um, Borough Council Equality Advisory Group, which is a statutory uh, board. Joel's also developing a Swindon Youth Forum to provide that younger voice for equality, recognising that if we want to sort of, you know, make a dial shift on Swindon being a more uh, equal and uh, diverse town, then we need to, to start with the with the next generation as well as work with the with the current one. Um, through that work. We've also uh, developed some volunteers, and this is still work in progress, to help Swindon Borough Council independently assess its diversity impact assessments. And one of these is completed every time a new uh, service uh, or, or change in service occurs to just have a wider think about the impact that that change or service may have on the broader community. And um, prior to this, those assessments were completed internally within the council. So we're just getting a, a broader landscape on that. I've mentioned the uh, equality, diversity and inclusion training, and you can follow the Swindon Equality Coalition and our equality work again on social media through Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. And then we have a role as the voice of the sector. Um, and although I've put my email address there, um, to, to a large extent, the whole team sort of carry this responsibility. But these are just some examples. So um, as the sort of CVS and if you like the representative body for the voluntary sector in Swindon, we have a place on the Swindon Health and Wellbeing Board. Um, Carol also attends the um, SBC COVID-19 Health Protection Board, which has been established since the, the pandemic. Um, we're involved with the uh, Bath and North East Somerset Swindon and Wiltshire Integrated Care System, which is why it's abbreviated to BSWICS, um, which is the CCG in old language, um, which is actually working uh, with all sides to develop a more in integrated approach and integrated care alliance in Swindon um, around healthcare. And we also work with the Swindon Towns Fund Board um, that has drawn in um, nearly 19 million for development in the town centre through through the general uh, government funded towns board initiative. And we've particularly been working uh, with the towns board to um, provide uh, community engagement and bring a community voice to that. Um, we're running the recovery groups, as I mentioned, and we're also working closely with the council on a project that is being led across the council, looking at community led support. And finally, our buildings and shop mobility, certainly not least. Um, so we are through Sanford House and John Street, we're landlord to 14 charities. Um, through those building spaces, we can offer COVID secure meeting rooms. We've got a conference room in John Street and in Sanford House and in a range of smaller rooms. And we're currently up and running until next week as the 2021 Census Support Centre in Sanford House. And then lastly, but not least, we're really proud to run the shop mobility service in the centre of Swindon, which enables uh, people to continue to shop and access services in the town centre if they've got uh, temporary or permanent mobility issues. And I'll leave you with a quote from one of the customers who said that without this extremely friendly service, it would be impossible to go to Swindon to do shopping and be sociable and actually feel part of society. Um, so we're very proud on that. So that, in a nutshell, is Voluntary Action Swindon, and I will now unshare. Thank you very much, Pam. That's absolutely fantastic and a huge you know, range of work. I know that Vaz does. So let's open up for questions. Uh, any questions for Pam or reflections? Don't be shy. This is the last chance. Can I just end in on a big thank you to you, Joel, for uh, pulling this off this week and to Rachel's help behind the scenes and to all the speakers and presenters, you know, not ev not everybody's comfortable presenting. Um, and I know it can be tricky sometimes, but um, I think it's been a really effective and useful uh, use of the, this virtual platform um, and people's time to, to really raise the bar on who does what across the voluntary sector in Swindon. So thanks to everybody this week for your involvement. Okay, dope. Well, yeah, thank you, Pam. And so, yeah, well, thanks for the presentation, Pam. That's been really great. And so I'll echo your thanks as well, everyone who's joined in, speakers and participants. Um, I'm going to send out an email to everyone who's registered as a participant. Of course, I'll be contacting the speakers as well, but uh, we just do, we, I'm going to ask you one question for your feedback. So please watch out for that email and uh, you, it'd be really valuable if you would just answer the one question I'm going to ask you in that email should come out later today. Um, 
other than that, I'll keep you update when we've got all the videos from these presentations online. So that when the VX directory has got everything up there, I'll drop you an email. We're also going to put put up there all the slides uh, that from the different presentations as well. Um, <clears throat> so you'll be able to, and people who didn't attend as well, will be able to get hold of that uh, information as well. And as Pam said, we're going to definitely 